Right guys, welcome back. Um, today I thought we'd go over the throttle bodies for the K100. They are a very popular point. Um, I think that pretty much comes down to a guy on Instagram called Ditstang. And that's just down to the fact that everything he does is has such attention to detail. Everything's polished, everything looks brand new. Um, and he is, he's renowned as one of the best K-bike builders, and there's a reason for that. So what I'm gonna try and do today, um, I've already cleaned these up. Um, and when I cleaned these up, I used a brass wire wheel and just a, a lot of elbow grease. Um, and they look okay, They're, they work as, as you'd expect. Um, the only problem is where I've left them for a little bit now um, you can see they're starting to to rust again and some of the finish on it is just a bit blotchy a bit patchy it's not great like obviously in here can't really get anything in there to clean it so just kind of gets left. So I'm going to start by stripping these down and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. It's pretty much basic components. Um, as you can see, you've got 16 of these pan head. I've, I've, I've put new ones in because the old ones were a bit cruddy. So I've got stainless ones, and these are uh, an M5 by 12 with some uh, spring washers. So go have a look for those. They're quite cheap. Makes it look a little bit nicer. You can just replace those one by one. Uh, we'll get those out of here for now because we don't need those. A bit obvious where they go. Right, and then you've got got a few steel pieces in here, which is partly the the issue with getting these nice and shiny and keeping them nice and shiny. Uh, so obviously still rusts so you've got your throttle cable uh, bracket uh, you've got your throttle stop a um, fuel pressure regulator bracket and the um, the bracket that holds on your throttle position sensor and your sort of fast idle switch there's also a couple of these brackets here which obviously control your butterfly these two are still, along with the um, the mechanism for the, the the fast idle. So it's worth just sort of taking some pictures and sort of memorising what goes where if you are planning on taking these apart because there are there is a few fair fair few parts to this, um, and you don't you don't want to lose it. So what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to start chucking stuff into the glass cabinet and go over these with a glass bead just to kind of give it a, a, a matte finish um, and then once we've done that um, we'll go over them with some semi-gloss uh, clear coat try and protect them try and keep them looking as you want so yeah I'll just strip these down a little bit further and then we'll put them into the cabinet. Just a, a quick thing before I chuck these into the blast cabinet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of um, gaffer tape just across the tops um, and the bottoms just to protect. There's um, I think this little valve here, this is for the um, Something to do with like the the idle control, and I'm not too sure. 
but I don't want to get grit in it. I know that. So I'm going to keep the caps on and try and cover these up as best as possible so we don't get any, uh, any stuff in there and cause us some issues down the road. Okay, first one. I'm going to try putting it in here. I'm using a slightly, the camera's slightly further back. Hopefully you should be able to get a better view rather than it being right on top. Um, hopefully I should be able to see better as well. If this sucks, you'll just have to accept a before and after. So let's get to it. Right, lost all the bits, as you can see. A lot more uniform now. Not perfect, but considering what they did look like, and that's pretty good. The only thing is, some of the steel has come out quite patchy. I'm not too sure what's going on there. I don't think it's like leftover paint. I can't feel anything. So. I'm going to try with some sandpaper, but I might just end up having to spray these parts silver and yeah, that'd be that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the, uh, the gaff tape off and I'm just going to clean everything off. I've already blasted it off with the airline, just to make sure there's no dust on it. There's still going to be some stuff on the surface. So yeah, I'm going to uh, take the gaff tape off and uh, give it a quick wipe down. Right, so lots of scrubbing later. What I'm going to try and do now is something a little bit different. I haven't actually seen anyone do this yet. So I don't fancy buying a plating kit and going through all the nuts and bolts and all the little bits and pieces and plating them one by one. It just seems like a lot of effort and a lot of stuff to be left on a bench. And this is my only workspace at the moment. So if I don't keep this clear then I have to work on the floor and I don't really want to work on the floor. So what I'm going to be trying to do is with like nuts and bolts like this, I'm going to try gun blue. Um, it's basically cold bluing. Hopefully it should give a black blue finish that should be fairly weather resistant as long as it's taken care of. So I'm going to give that a go um, and see what these things look like. The process of taking these out because I wanted to do something with these because they're steel. Um, but I thought I'd go through the process of actually how to take them apart. So there's just two screws down here. These come out. Got to be careful because these are I think they're brass, um, which is quite a, a soft metal. So don't just go and try and force it. Use the right size screwdriver and uh, they come out pretty easy. So once you've taken these screws out, unfortunately I can't get my big fat fingers in there to pull them out, so I just have to tip them out. 
So what I do then is if you rotate the assembly around and you can you should just be able to gently push push them through until you can pull it out. This will then rotate back around and the spring will lose tension. At that point your spring should be free and you should just be able to gently push this through. There she is. Nice and easy. Fitting it exact same way it came out. Right, so I've got all my parts that are ready to go back together. And then I've got the parts that need to be painted. I've already done some blue in on the springs. They came out quite nice. Also, some of the nuts look quite good. So now I've just got to clean these bits up, put some paint on them. Got some uh, clear on this uh, on the steel parts. So just made myself a little drying rack. I used this stuff. It says it's 2k, but I mean, how? There's not two parts, and if it was all one part, it, well, I don't know. So we'll have to see how it how it works out tomorrow. But I'm gonna let these dry for 24 hours. Come out tomorrow, and we'll put it back together. Right, guys, new day. Um, I gave everything. A, not everything, but most of these parts uh, a coat of semi-clear lacquer yesterday and they've turned out pretty nice so I'm going to put all this back together say rebuild put back together as you can probably see where I did have it apart I did touch these three screws now, I think they're nicknamed the screws that shall not be touched there's a reason for that <laughs> is that a lot of people don't know how to set them up but they're very very simple all it's doing is it's controlling how the angle is to the previous butterfly and all you need to do really to set them up is shine a light up from underneath and you'll see how to far in to close it um, whether you screw it in or screw it out and that will that pretty much get them there or thereabouts and then once you've got them fairly close you put them on the bike and you use a something like a colour tune or um, just a, you know, the, the four vacuum gauges um, and that will help you get it where it needs to be. But for now, this is perfect for me. I think I'm going to uh, stick it on the engine and have a look, see what they look like. There we have it. It'll be the end of this video. Um, but just to give you a little sneak peek into what I'm working on at the moment, if I put that on there, it doesn't 
I'm ready to go with this bike. I've got a straight up version as well. I think I'm going to have to go with the 45. So if you want to find out what that's all about, keep tuned and it'll uh, be coming up in the, in the next videos. So if you want to find out what that's all about, stay tuned and it'll be in one of the new videos. That's it for this video guys. If you like what you saw, please give the video a like and please consider subscribing. Cheers guys.